logic is the theory is not going to be any different. The theory will be exactly the same, except obviously you'll be using different tickers and things like that. Okay, here let me try and uh, okay, let's try and launch this. So once again, I'm showing you the de I'll be showing you the demonstration with respect to uh, the crude oil options because that is what is trading right now. Okay, or we could try gold options. Maybe this is a little bit better. Let's try gold options. So I right click on that, go to trading tools. Uh, there are other ways to do this. You can just look at the videos and, and do, do them. Uh, look at the educational videos uh, regarding the TWS. What happened? It's taking a long time to load. Okay, so everyone is familiar with this view by now. Yes. You have the chain view. You saw what I did. I went to because obviously now if I if I do SPY or Tesla or something because US equity markets are not open. So I will not get live prices, but the gold just GC is for gold futures. They're traded on the uh, this is, used to be COMEX gold. Now they've merged it into NYMEX. All of this is part of the CME group, which is one of the largest futures and option exchanges in the world. So GC is the code for gold. This is the international gold market futures on uh, gold uh, traded in terms of dollars per troy ounce. So this means twelve eighty eight dollars per troy ounce. So I just right clicked on it and launched the option trader. OK, this is trading on the Globex platform of CME. It's trading pretty much 24 hours. The gold is that kind of market. OK, so we'll come back to this. Now I'll just briefly give you uh, the decision problems that you have. OK. So let's just quickly go through. We'll we'll get back to your notes, but uh, where's your calc file? Okay, so I've given you this framework once again. Uh, so if you remember that uh, these are some of the uh, I've given you this framework here. Okay, which is the eyeball versus the bullish uh, versus the underlying asset views. Okay, let's just try to form. I just I'll just write it down briefly here. Okay, um, you quickly go through the decision problems. Okay, so when we are now we are looking at option trading. So you have let's list out the uh, specific decision problems for option trading. I'll just try to do it here. It's not going to be pretty, but we'll do it here so that I can get it all in one view. Okay, so the first uh, decision problem when you're trading options, the first decision problem is uh, asset class, okay, which is common to the other problems. All right, you have asset class and then you have uh, market and the instrument is obviously decided because it's option trading. So it is options is the instrument. Okay, so you're trading in options. So you can focus first on first you look at asset class. So these are specific to option trading. We are going to just recap it once again. Uh, so now I'm redoing the whole list option trading uh, decision problems. Okay. Let me make this a little bit smaller so that I can fit everything into one. Are you guys following what I'm saying doing here? Okay. We are once again trying to look at the decision problems and option trading. Uh, and so the first one is oh, let's go over here. Okay. So the first one obviously is let's say asset class. <coughs> Whose phone is ringing? <laughs> when you put the phones here, I presume you. Uh, you're supposed to put it on silent. Okay, so the first decision problem is asset class. Okay, the first one is asset class. The second is, what is the next one? Suppose I've decided asset class. I've decided to go into equities. Okay, so when I'm trading, yeah, so next one is market. If I've decided to go into equities, next one is market, and market you can think of in two steps. So the first market, so the next one is market, okay, and market you can think of in two steps, which is um, country and ticker, okay. Now we are getting down into country plus. So we are assuming that the asset class decision we have decided to choose equities. Okay, there are many asset classes, as you know. Okay, so we've chosen equities. 
and then the next decision is market uh, which is basically split into country plus ticker okay which you could just I'm just making it very clear here but otherwise if you just choose the ticker depending on the ticker it will automatically imply the country so for instance what I mean by country and ticker is you can have certain stocks are traded in multiple countries okay so the Infosys for instance if you are trading Infosys you could trade the stock listed in India okay or you could also trade the ADR listed in the US all right so that's why I'm just trying to be a little bit more systematic uh, and say that okay market can be actually split up into country and you decide which country you're going to trade in and then the ticker okay but if you just specify the ticker it will automatically uh, imply the country because for instance if you write Oracle here in the ticker if you write Oracle this will automatically imply that it is in the US okay so you can see here this is um, yeah it is uh, in the US so Oracle is not going to be even if they have a listing in on the London Stock Exchange that will not have the ticker ORCL it will have some other ticker so uh, what happened here okay this is too big actually the view is too big still can't see most of the options going to cause problems if it's so okay here yeah. yeah so this is actually oracle so we can make this a little bit bigger all right so coming back to our decision problems okay the first uh, first is asset class second is market instrument is not a decision problem and option trading because you have already chosen options as the instrument are you following yes, sir. okay instrument is not a decision problem because it's already been chosen okay so then asset class market instrument then the next question obviously is to buy or to sell okay now to buy or to sell if you will we'll go with this framework because it fits with the general framework buy or sell fine you take a decision on buy or sell and how will you decide that okay let's put a little thing here that it is based on eyeball okay so we'll go back to the framework now then obviously this is not looking good let me just move this it is making the framework very ugly all right let's put that down here and let's go back to the framework okay so understand one thing eyeball let's look at any of the eyeball charts <laughs> okay this is a VIX have you guys heard of the VIX in India also we have a VIX now they have trademarked this name so these guys whoever owns this I think S&P or somebody who owns this trademark so this index is a is a trademark it's like an intellectual property kind of thing so it's a trademark and this they have trademark they have licensed the trademark to India as well so VIX is a trademark for uh, you know an index of uh, uh, implied volatilities okay so the VIX this particular ticker refers to uh, the uh, options on the on the uh, S&P 500 index okay so if you go back here and make it SPY SPY is a is a is actually strictly speaking would be GSPC but which is the index and by SPY is a is a ticker and if you uh, which tracks the index okay so SPY if you use SPY and uh, let's change this to All right so you follow this SPY is just one tenth of the S&P 500 index it is a ETF that tracks the index this is one of your tickers are you guys following yes, sir. okay it's one of your tickers what how is it related to the S&P 500 index you'll see it's a, it's one tenth of the index the value of the index okay so it is safe to use the SPY to track the S&P 500 index and what the VIX does is the VIX is a ticker okay which is this is an index of implied volatilities eyeballs on s p 500 index options okay so this is basically the corresponding now that you're trading options you have to look at both the underlying and the eyeball okay so this is your underlying chart for the spy okay and this is your corresponding eyeball chart okay so what the eyeball is showing you as i've told you in that earlier video as well so remember we are at this point we have to take this decision about buy or to sell to buy or to sell options okay 
at this stage in option trading should we should i buy says options or should i sell options so with that we are going to we are going to take that decision based on our view on the eyeball okay why why do we do that because the eyeball is the index of option prices if you want to know whether option prices are getting cheaper in general both uh, both uh, equity uh, both calls and puts okay if you want to know if option prices are getting cheaper if, if that's happening if if the eyeball chart is coming down that means option prices in general are getting cheaper okay so look at the eyeball chart is nothing but a chart of option prices when it's going up means option prices are becoming more expensive and when it's going down the reverse okay so therefore what you have to do because remember this is your decision problem whether i should be buying or selling options to form that uh, and remember you're already locked in when you come to any subsequent decision problem we already assume that there is a solution to the previous decision problem okay so in the case of the market country ticker let's say i'm going to work this example uh, with respect to the SPY okay so this is our SPY and I know that the SPY the corresponding eyeball index for SPY is the un, uh, the carrot VIX okay this is the ticker so now I look at this I have to form the decision of whether to buy or sell SPY options I'm going to form that by taking a view on the eyeball this is clear remember everything you do in finance pretty much involves taking a view on the market okay and there is no guarantee as to what will happen so you need to evolve a structured method for managing risk which is why you notice if you talk to people like if you see interviews of people like Lloyd Blankfein who come from a trading background okay former CEO of Goldman Sachs he is not he will tell you that I'm not so focused on forecasting but rather on managing risk because it is full of errors and the question is how are you going to manage the risk there is no guarantee on what will happen yeah so you have to hit the right ticker okay which means see for instance uh, yes i i mean i'm not sure exactly what your question means but eyeball index any eyeball index okay any eyeball chart any eyeball chart will show you how price how prices on options for that underlying asset have been moving okay so in this case the strictly speaking the underlying asset is the s p 500 index but we are using the spy etf to track the index because it's one tenth of the index okay so as far as forming because the vix has a lot of data this underscore this carrot vix uh, ticker has a lot of data so since it is the same underlying asset it is just one tenth so it is just a linear uh, you know transformation so therefore we can uh, we can just use the vix charts to form a view on which way the eyeball is going to go for SPY options also. Is this clear to everyone? Yes. Okay. So how am I going to decide how to, whether to buy or to sell options? I need, obviously, if I think option prices are going to go up, then I'll be buying. If I think option prices are going to go down, I'm going to be selling. And how will I form that view on option prices? I will do that by looking at the eyeball charts. Okay. So I need to know the ticker, obviously. This is where your contextual knowledge comes in. If you're trading Oracle options, you will have to figure out how to generate an eyeball chart for oracle options okay then you are not going to form a view on oracle options by looking at the VIX chart that would be a very poor proxy okay all right so uh, so now is this clear now i have to form a view on this okay so let's say i i decide that i look at this chart and i decide that let's say i'm a mean reversion person and i feel that of course you can make this little bit bigger as well i mean you can get a lot more data a lot more data and usually and you can see notice one thing about the eyeball charts you see how odd they look you've seen lots of other charts of euros uh, euro dollar swiss this that copper prices you notice how odd they look the eyeball charts they're not like normal stock they are, they are kind of like a they, they squiggle around for a while then there's a big jump and then they again they drop they, they, the behavior of eyeball is very different from the behavior of any underlying asset okay these kind of things you should develop a feel for so you can look at this long-term data on eyeball charts okay now so let's say i form a view that eyeball i'm a mean reversion type of guy and i feel that eyeball prices are going to go eyeball chart the chart is going to go up it's going to shoot up which means option prices are going to rise okay so now i've already solved this problem the problem of buy sell i'm going to be a buyer this is clear okay i'm going to be a buyer of op options okay now um, what else is pro what else is so if i'm a buyer of options is there any other decision problem left call or put has to be decided okay i can fine tune my i can fine tune my market play by i can fine tune my speculation by buying call deciding whether to buy calls or puts 
because that will get the 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 impact will be very different depending on how the underlying asset moves right depending on how the underlying asset moves if i i can of course buy both calls and puts that's also an option okay but is there a smarter option a smarter option because calls and puts will not behave the same way depending on how the underlying asset moves okay here's your spy chart okay you can see this if you form a puts okay, adding a okay. yeah it is still there okay so here's your spy five year data on the spy index okay on the spy etf this is the us stock market essentially the broad index so depending now if i buy both calls and puts that's, that's one kind of option okay you can't do that but there are certain strategies like strangle straggle straddle long straddles long strangles if you read your cme options book remember in your finance reference in your finance reference there's a bunch of books in your finance reference folder from the previous course yes. there's a bunch of books there's a book by sheldon natchenberg yes. okay on option trading okay option trading and uh, i think uh, volatility uh, strategies which i don't remember the name of the book but then there's also the 25 cme option strategies you can check that up okay so there you'll find lots of strategies like straddles strangles butterflies condors and all that but before you get into all that you should have your basics clear there are many option strategies but your basics should be clear so the point i'm trying to make is that obviously if you're bullish on eyeball you can just buy options you can buy both calls and puts but can you little can you be a little bit smarter like if you can also take a view on which way the the spy is going to go the underlying asset remember this is the underlying asset now okay if you can also take a view on which way the market is going to go here suppose the market is just going to keep shooting up okay in that case would you have been uh, what will happen to your puts if you buy puts and then the market shoots up so the puts will lose value mm. right put is a right to sell mm. everyone is not clear even about this <laughs> just make sure at least you understand this part every step the logic should be clear everyone knows that a put is a right to sell yes. okay so if you buy both calls and puts and then the market from here keeps just shooting up okay goes to new highs then what will happen to the puts Please. that you bought here the puts will lose value okay let's say you buy at the money puts which means you buy the puts at this whatever this price is i can't even read it here it's 279 okay because of the reflection okay so the price is 279 and so uh, all right so the price is 279 and so if i buy let's say 280 puts and i buy 280 calls okay so and if the market shoots up straight to 300 what's happened to the 280 puts they are pretty much worthless now because i have a right what's the point of selling at 280 what's the point of owning the right to sell at 280 when the market is at 300 right so the puts have lost value so the point is that there is some benefit uh, so lakshay will lose marks we will deduct the marks later on okay so uh, just make a note of his name okay so uh, so uh, so so the clearly the point i'm trying to the point i'm getting at is that uh, once you have found a view on the eyeball your next step whether to buy calls or puts there is some value addition possible if you can call the underlying market correctly then you could decide in this case let's say my view is bullish and it turns out to be actually correct then if i buy only calls then i'll make more money than buying the calls and puts because i'm not losing money on the puts is this clear okay so therefore yes what happened okay so buy sell options that decision problem is solved by looking at the eyeball forming a view on the eyeball okay and then the question is the next decision problem is call or put okay is this clear this is formed this is this decision problem is solved by taking a view on the this all is all this is written in your notes in detail in english okay so a proper english sentences so i'm not writing all that stuff here i just want to put in all the problems in one view okay quickly and summarize them and give you the structure from head to toe in one sitting so that you're clear about this so once you understand this then you should never forget it in your life you should just logically be able to go stepwise and create the structure okay okay so call put yes no i didn't get the first part of your question sir buy and sell decision should also be based on underlying asset rather than the implied volatility no that's what you have to understand no because we are what was the instrument 
okay instrument we have not written as a decision problem because we are already in, in the trading options box Answer. we have decided to trade options so therefore the instrument is already chosen we are not trading swaps or futures or forwards right so that's why i didn't write instrument as a decision problem okay when you write the generic problems on a blank slate then you put that instrument also as a decision problem because you need to decide whether to trade spot or forwards or futures or options or swaps okay here that decision problem doesn't exist because you're already in the option trading frame uh, box is this clear now the decision you will see why the decision to buy or to sell options is based purely on the view on eyeball okay because we have a separate decision on the question of whether to buy or sell whatever you decided here let's say i've decided i'm just making an assumption that on this decision problem i have solved it by deciding to buy okay so therefore i come to the next step which is to buy calls or to buy puts now this decision problem is solved by taking a view on the underlying just like the previous one is solved by taking a view on the eyeball here again i have to go and take a view on the underlying okay but it is not necessary that uh, the index should be directly correlated to the underlying asset So which that, index are you talking about? Sir, yeah, VIX uh, uh, volatility index to be yeah. directly correlated to the underlying asset. Yeah, yeah, that's that's okay. That's no. You are saying what he's saying is that uh, this the eyeball index of the underlying. Okay, eyeball index of options on the underlying here, which is the VIX, and the underlying we are going to take it as the SPY. Okay, so the VIX is not going to be correlated to the SPY. There is some correlation, but we are not going to rely on that. Okay, we're not going to take it as a as a kind of a law of physics that will always hold. But generally, uh, we will say that there is no. We don't necessarily expect some correlation. Okay, what you should know also as a matter of context. This is also in your notes. Okay, as a mat as a general principle, broadly speaking, what we expect is when the stock market declines. Okay. When the stock market declines, what do we expect in terms of the the movement of the eyeball? It is generally expected to go up. Okay, if you look at if we look at six month charts and see, you may be able to see that this relationship. If we look at six month charts, this is a broad. Uh, see this massive drop you had in December. When is this December? When is this? This is what date is this? I can't read the date. <coughs> That is, I think, the uh, 30th November, right? Is it? What is it? Okay, 3rd of 3rd of uh, December. This is the American style dating system. So this is 3rd of December. So and then from 3rd of December to uh, 24th of December, there's a big drop in the stock market. And so let's look at the movement from. Yeah, 3rd of December. Can you see? I was third of December, from there to twenty fourth of December. This is, I think, they have used weekly charts actually. Otherwise, why are we getting such? Uh, so, uh, so, 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 okay, okay, okay. And this one, yeah, you're right. This one is daily, and let's make this uh, one day, okay? And let's go to six months. All right. Now you can see. Yeah, twelve three. You remember the SPY chart from third of December to twenty fourth December? There's a massive drop. You saw there was tremendous panic all over the world. Okay, mm -hmm. because people were saying that you know the trade talks will not work out and things like that. There's going to be a trade war. So there's a massive drop in the equity index. Okay, uh, and there is what is happening to the eyeball from third of December here is third of December to twenty fourth of December. What happened to the eyeball? Sure. It's shot up. Okay, so there is again. I don't want. I want you to be very careful. Don't take this as a law of physics. But in general, we expect this kind of relationship in equity markets. Okay, that when the equity market declines, the eyeball will rise. Okay, the theory behind this is that again, this is all written in your notes. The theory behind this is that when because equity market investors are generally long. Okay, so when the market starts to decline, they rush to buy. Put option protection. Okay, they rush to buy put option protection, and so that drives up the price of put option. And by put call parity, call option price will also have to rise. Okay, so the eyeball has to rise. Okay, so this is the the theory behind this. So, but again, as I said, you have to be careful that uh, don't like fall in love with this relationship. Okay, 
that this relationship is always there. I did this wonderful correlation and therefore I'm going to bet by whole fortune on this relationship. These relationships are not 100% reliable. Okay. There is a broad tendency. Okay. So yeah, this is on further dilation of your point observation about the correlation between the VIX and between the eyeball index and the underlying prices. Okay. Especially in equity markets, you see this situation. Uh, so now we are coming back to this uh, decision problem, which is, yeah. So what we are saying is the, whether to buy or calls or whether to buy puts, that has to be decided by taking a view on the underlying asset. Is this clear? Okay. So now what I do is obviously I form this view. This has already been explained to you in your earlier video that I'm going to form a view on this uh, S&P 500 of the, of the SPY. And let's say my view is that this is going to keep on rising. Okay. Let's take, I take a one year view. It's going to keep on rising. And this is the, this is the all time high and it's going to quickly keep on rising and just very quickly clear the all time highs. Okay. So in that case, what should I buy calls or puts? Calls. I should buy calls. Okay. Oh, yes. In earlier step, I decided to buy options because the eyeball view is bullish. Now the underlying view is also bullish. So therefore I'll buy calls. Okay. So this brings you to this framework. Okay. Sir, Which you, yes. Yeah. The Why don't you use the mic? We have the mic. Pass him the mic. Let's try. And <coughs> yes. So this is the framework that we are looking at, which we have already uh, sort of just discussed uh, stepwise. Now, when I take this here, the underlying asset, the this particular thing will to get it all in one view. Okay, it's not working out in one view. Okay. 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 Now you have it in one view. Okay. So this is just a matrix which helps you to decide. Obviously, it's not very pretty, but this is meant to be that this uh, this part of the matrix is on the underlying asset. You are bullish on the underlying asset or bearish on the underlying asset. And this part of the matrix is on the eyeball. You are bullish on the eyeball or the bearish on the eyeball. Okay. So this is the matrix. Obviously, uh, could be done much better visually. But now you understand this framework. Please make sure that everybody understands this framework. Yes, Chetan, are you following? This is just a recap of what we have already decided. Okay, and it's uh, to remember the framework, it's I mean, to put it into this kind of framework just maybe makes it a little easier to remember or whatever it is, but you can also remember it logically. This is clear. So you have this kind of a combination. So I'm going to move on from here. Everyone is clear about this? Yes, Mittal, are you following? Okay, yes, yeah, your question. Sorry, what was the question? The answer is you got the answer. Okay. Sorry. Another question. Another question. Go ahead. Go ahead. So can you open that uh, chart? Yes. Hmm. So then we can see that the market is bullish. So then we can buy the call. You can't. The from here, it doesn't follow. I just said that I'm. I'm going to take a bullish view just for the heck of it, you know, just for, for the purpose of, uh, you know, crystallizing a decision. You can also look at this and take a bearish view. Okay. So let's be clear about that. Okay. I just took a view because we need to take a decision. Okay. So I forced a view. Yeah. So if my view is that market is bullish. Yeah. And I can buy a call option or I can sell a put option. Yes. So that's why here, if you see, what do we see in your framework? Okay. Now. If you, why will you not sell a put option in this case? Look at the combination of views. Why have I locked you into, this is something which you have to be clear about, which is not intuitively obvious. What Sahil is saying is obvious, quite obvious that if your view, if you were only looking at this chart, okay, if you were only doing your option trading based on the views on the underlying asset, okay, then what Sahil is saying is true. Okay. Of course, there are some other nuances to that because the risk profile of those two positions is not the same. Buying a call option and selling a put option, which one is more risky? 
selling a put option because you have to understand this this is called these are called unlimited risk options okay unlimited risk positions okay that is in a selling a put option you can keep on losing unlimited amounts of money if you buy a call option if you buy any option okay in long option essentially short option positions are unlimited risk positions and any long option position is a limited risk position okay yes that doesn't mean that you can't make money by selling options or you that you'll always make money by buying options but you have to be aware that these are unlimited risk positions okay any short option position okay so your answer is correct uh, if we if we sort of uh, forget about the risk if we forget about the risk asymmetry what sail is saying is that if my view on the underlying asset is bullish i can either buy a call or i can sell a put okay that statement is valid if we can forget about the asymmetric risk profiles that short option positions have uh, dramatically asymmetric risk profiles compared to long option positions okay if we can forget about that then a statement is okay but then the other thing that we have to also forget uh, forget about to make your statement okay is that we don't have anything called eyeball or we don't have a view of the eyeball okay the moment you bring in are you following the logic here okay okay so if we didn't have anything to do with eyeball or then there was no concept of eyeball then his view would be okay but now we have something called eyeball so now we have already therefore we have identified an additional decision problem is the view of whether to buy or sell options okay so therefore we have also formed a view on eyeball so if my in this case my view on eyeball is bullish so therefore i he's what he's saying is that i could either buy call when he's saying that he's only looking at this part of the matrix he's saying if my underlying asset view is bullish i can either buy call or sell put okay that is true if you don't have a clear view on the eyeball or the eyeball view doesn't matter but if you have a further refined view on the eyeball that if your view on the eyeball is bullish why would you sell puts because if you are selling puts means you are expecting the option prices to go down okay it can go down in two ways all this is all there in your notes it can go down in two ways either the if you sell a put let's go back here if you sell a put here the put price okay can go down you're selling a put means you expect put prices to go down it can go down in two ways due to two factors okay broadly there are other factors also but broadly it can either go down because the stock market shoots up you sell a put here and the market shoots up so the value of the put declines you sell an at the money put which is say 280 and then and after that the market shoots up so because of that the uh, the put will lose value that's one way the other way the put can lose value is if the eyeball keeps declining if there is a sharp drop in eyeball then even without any change in the underlying asset price your put price will fall okay we can check it here okay if we look at uh, this is also very big yeah if you look at this now let's look at the put option prices when the underlying price is at 100 okay and now we are going to show it and let's obviously this let's assume that these are market prices so these are actually the eyeballs okay this ball input is the eyeball because it gives you a fair value equal to the market price remember this definition of eyeball make sure you understand what eyeball is okay make sure you go through these because these are all complex concepts you are learning for the first time so unless you revise it multiple times and understand the concept you will not get it okay so in this case if you just drop the eyeball figures okay see what happens to put option price 4.4 okay let's drop the eyeball to maybe 15 and see what happens i don't know if you can see the figures what happens 2.49 okay so the put price has dropped nothing has happened to the underlying asset price you notice that i have not changed any underlying asset price okay but just because the eyeball has dropped the put prices have dropped okay so essentially if if uh eyeball if the eyeball index drops okay eyeball levels drop then also your put can lose value okay just like your call can lose value so there are two ways you can uh, two broad ways there are other inputs also that are involved which can also have an impact but these are the two broad uh, inputs into i mean the two major drivers of option prices movements in the underlying asset and movements in eyeball okay so therefore also be clear that you could be both of these need not go the same way okay so what i'm trying to say is let's understand this also is this is everyone clear about this that the true two biggest drivers of option prices are eyeball 
and movement of underlying, underlying asset, asset movements okay movements and eyeball and underlying asset movements okay the two biggest drivers now obviously there as uh, sahil was uh, goel was hinting at earlier that these need not be well perfectly correlated so one could go in your favor one could go against you okay so what might happen is after you have bought suppose here you buy call options and after that the underlying asset moves up a little bit okay so that is working to increase the value of your call but there may be a dramatic collapse in eyeball remember you bought call options so you went long call okay if you go back to this framework this is where you were okay buy call you were bullish on eyeball and bullish on the underlying asset now this view turns out to be correct okay but this view turns out to be wrong so whatever you make on this account might because of this might actually be more than offset by what you lose because of this is everyone clear about this okay just basic basic logic because you have two major drivers okay so one can more both can go in your favor both can go against you one can go in your favor one is going against you magnitude wise one can offset the other so all kinds of things can happen okay so you should be aware of these things okay so are we all clear till now okay so let's look at go back to our dps asset class magna call put underline anything else we have to decide yes expiry date expiry date okay so when you look at this option now we can go to our option trader okay now you can see we have uh, in this particular because i've chosen the wrong um, contract maybe i should just get uh, so I don't think is not clear can you please explain it again sorry come again the decision problem is not clear can you explain it again which one which one so buy or sell one minute uh let me just let me just launch a new so you have to choose uh, light sweet crude oil this is we are not doing this okay this is what rahul got confused about okay because when i do the recording i do the recording maybe outside us uh, stock market hours so i am using tickers which are going to be live at this time what what happened to this maybe i didn't okay let me just uh, let me just do it on uh, this one yeah let me just do it bb will have um, trading to this open option trader on the spy this may still be okay so obviously the next decision problem is your job is not over yet and this is a incremental decision problem for option trading you remember when we did the generic decision problems for managing an investment fund okay that was a traditional investment fund essentially so we didn't have to worry about options we just said okay buy or sell the underlying asset and we stopped at that point okay so implicitly we were trading let's say spot or something like that okay so now we have options so there's additional additional decision problems in option trading that we have to decide which expiry are we interested in okay because the prices are going to be different the sensitivities are different okay so we have to worry about which expiry we are interested in so if you load the option trader you will find that there are uh, multiple expiries which are going to appear over here okay let it load so that's another decision problem let's write it down while it's loading so this is the expiry that is what is the tenor of options that you want to trade okay what is the tenor of the option we are just going to call it expiry okay so here we have a decision based on um theta versus vega broadly we are saying again this is also mentioned in your notes there's a chart as well okay so the rule in expiry is i'm just giving you some broad thumb rules okay once you get confident you can also you can always break the rules and form your own customized view but i'm giving you some kind of a structure with which you can operate as a beginner okay which uh, follows some basic principles okay so as far as expiry is concerned remember that when you come to this decision problem you have already solved the earlier problems yes. okay so you already have a view on whether you are this buy should not be here this should be here maybe okay all right
just put it as buy so i've already decided to buy based on buy options based on this and i've already decided to buy calls okay based on this okay so at the earlier decision at the earlier stages my decision have been buy and here call i've chosen calls over puts so i've got a buy call decision here so now i have an expiry decision to make so the general rule here is that when you are buying options you should push yourself out to longer dates okay when you are buying options you should push yourself out to longer dates i'll give you the rule first and then we'll talk about the logic behind it uh, what happened why is this taking so long to load maybe there's a net connection problem or something Okay, let's try something else. Let's go for a slide. I think the PC is becoming unresponsive because my uh, memory is chock a block. Okay, so we'll have to just forget about that for a while. but uh, we can see it in other areas as well that we have so the decision problem is respect to expiry yeah yeah it's not responding okay so the decision problem with respect to expiry with what we do is when you are buying all this is in your notes okay when you are buying we can go down to the notes maybe now I've accidentally opened opera as well okay options and series all this is written in your all these things we have already discussed the weight tricks we have already discussed okay um we have added the expiry date and then we would come to another decision point I want to just show you the chart, okay? Yeah. So here, what I'm telling you in terms of this is visually a little bit clearer. When I'm so the broad thumb rule is that when I'm buying, I want to be buying longer dated options. Okay, you can see the. I think it's come, but we can see it here. If we look at uh, SPY options here. Okay, so where do we see that there are multiple expirations possible? Okay, we can go to a straddle view. A straddle is a type of strategies, but straddle view essentially means that they show you it show you the thing. instead of showing all the calls first and then the puts first, they show you the calls and puts side by side according to the strike. Okay, so where do you see this? These are the spy options. Okay, and you can see here how many maturities exist. Can you see that? This is the expiry. these are all these uh, alternatives are available with respect to expiry if you want to trade spy options so you have a decision to take which expiry are you going to be trading in all these expiries exist that's your decision problem that we are con contemplating now and what we are saying is because you come to this decision problem having already solved the earlier problem so you are already in the buy call sell put whatever box so in this case since i'm buying calls the rule is that longer period yeah So when I'm buying when I'm buying options whether calls or puts I want to go for longer dated options and while I'm selling options I want to go for shorter dated options okay the reason this is based on as I said here this is based on what is called the theta versus vega view okay I mean not the theta versus vega view but the 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 two sensitivities okay theta versus vega okay so the rule i'm not writing it here it will take up too much space but you know the rule so if you are selling go for shorter dated options if you are buying go for longer dated options okay what is why is that logic yeah the logic i'll give you the logic now so you remember these sensitivities here can you guys read the stuff here yes. at the back the punctu can you read this theta vega you can't read it 
but I think anyway, if I make it bigger, it will go out of the view. That's another problem. Now that's so we have to just keep it here. Okay. So you remember that we discussed these sensitivities. So theta is what? What is theta measure? Sensitivity to passage of time. Okay. So theta is negative for both any long option position. Theta will have theta will be negative. Any short option position, theta will be positive okay so you can see that theta has a certain magnitude also it has a sign here okay these are obviously given for long option positions implicitly for long positions so theta has a sign but it also has a magnitude okay so what you will find that theta is very high if i notice that let's look at the call option theta as, a, as an example let's look at the call option theta remember this minus z i don't know if you can read but minus minus 0 0.024 right minus 0 0.024 so remember this now what i'm going to do is i'm going to drastically this is a 90 day option right now okay i'm going to drastically reduce the days to expiration okay i'm going to make it a very short dated option nothing else is changing okay so minus 0 0.024 and this i'm going to make it like three days let's say just to make it extreme okay now what has happened here minus 0 0.097 has the theta gone up? Yes. On down, on down. Sorry, come again. Okay, okay, fine. But uh, why is uh, so why don't the placement people come here? They are giving you a call. No, but they should call you. No, shouldn't they call you? Yes. No, no, no. Let's call somebody. Why don't you call Faraz? I'll just talk to him. Actually, this should not be the way to do it. When you guys have to go for an interview, somebody from placement should come and just drag you guys out. I mean, not drag you out. <laughs> but uh, because what happens here is that I don't know who's supposed to go for the interview. Gawa, just call Faraz. I'll talk to him. Just call Faraz on your phone. Okay, guys. Be quiet. Is this point clear? The theta is higher? No, no, no. no. Magnitude of theta is higher. I'm absolute value. I should have clarified. Okay. Now earlier it was losing value at the rate of 0 0.02 per day. Now it's going to lose value at the rate of 0 0.09 per day. Okay. So is this clear? Okay. So what are we? What is the principle we are trying to establish here? We are trying to establish this principle that shorter dated options have much higher theta. Okay. Which is what is the same thing that has been shown in your notes. When you go to your notes, this chart, the shorter dated, the theta, this is plotting the theta for as a function of time to expiration. Okay. This is the magnitude of theta. It is always negative. Okay. And it is plotting it as a, it's just a simple X, Y graph. Okay. So it is plotting this and this is because theta is always negative. It is for a long option position. Okay. So theta will have, when it, when it comes to shorter dated options, the theta becomes dramatically, uh, you know, uh, negative in the sense the magnitude of theta is very high. Absolute value of theta becomes very high. So therefore, because remember my decision is, what was my decision? My decision was to buy call. Okay. So now I want to be buying longer dated options because what will happen to the, remember when you, when you have a call option, what happened? You didn't get him. He's not picking up. Sorry. Or if you have Mukda's number, you call Mukda. Okay. So uh, they should have actually organized it in this manner because it should not be done like this uh, through the. Uh, okay, guys, please pay attention. Don't use this as an excuse to lose your focus. Is this clear what we have established? These are all complicated points. You need to be careful about what, what we are discussing. Sorry? Yeah. So if you have these are for these are for long option positions, the theta negative theta is for long option positions. Is he there? Yes. Hello for us. For us. Hi. I so I am in a class. Do you need some? okay? So is this clear? Now we have established that when you have a long option position. Uh, if it's a short dated option it will have very high theta okay uh, but if it's a if it's a longer dated option the theta is much more manageable okay remember for a long option position theta is always working against you, you need to be you once you need you need to understand these concepts 
so well that eventually you'll end up memorizing them without actually memorizing them in the first place okay that long option positions have negative theta okay and if you have a lot uh, and if it's a shorter dated option it will have very high negative theta that means the loss of value per day will be very high that's why when you buy options when you are when you're going to be buying options calls or puts your strategy is to focus on longer expi expiry dates where the theta damage is not going to be that much is this clear yes this is clear to everyone the okay the another thing all this is in the notes what does the negative sign mean? What is the negative? Negative sign denotes. Negative sign denotes. Okay, let's be clear about that. So negative sign denotes. So this is these sensitivities are for long option positions. Okay. Now, what is the negative sign? It shows that if you have a uh, long option position, okay, with these parameters, okay, underlying is here, exercise price is here. Then once you buy this option, if nothing else moves, Cetris Paribus. Centris Paribus, every day this option is going to lose this much value. That means this 0.559 call option. Okay. If you reduce the, you can do this experiment and see. Okay. It will it will not be exactly the same, but it will be ra rounded off in one minute, one minute, one minute. When you ask the question, let me answer. Don't be like a journalist. Wait one minute. <laughs> Just wait and listen to my answer. Okay. What does this mean? The question is valid because we need to be clear about these things. What does this mean? That means that if you go along this option with these parameters, okay, and if nothing has happened, center is paribus, nothing else happens, but one day passes, okay. So it goes from say whatever three days to two days. The one day has passed, okay. In one day, this the estimate of the option valuation model is that this call option value 0.559 will reduce by 0 0.097. The minus 0 0.097 means that this this particular premium will reduce by minus 0 0.097 if you change the days to expiration from 3 to 2. Is this clear? That's what it means. Okay. So bottom line, what we have learned as a principle is that is you, you should recap the earlier learning that all long option positions, okay, call or put have negative theta. Okay. Whether you're long calls or long puts, the theta will be working against you. Okay. And you will lose time. Lakshya, can you come and sit here next to uh, Mittal and I'll deduct one more set of points from your group. You guys are constantly talking, you and Prachi. Come here, come and sit next to Lakshya, come and sit next to Mittal. Come and sit next to Mittal. So we can split up your group. Come here, come here, quickly. Okay, so what have we learned? We've learned that long option positions have negative theta. Okay, so whenever you go long options, you have to be worried about how much are you losing per day due to the theta. Okay. Then another thing we have learned is that if you can play around with the expiration date, the longer dated options will have much less theta than the shorter dated options. Is this clear? Another thing we have learned, we can just, you can visually remember, pictures are easier to remember than, uh, than uh, numbers or words. You remember this picture that theta is a function of time to expiration. Shorter dated options have very high theta longer dated options have much less theta okay so therefore when you are buying options your strategy is to buy options that is what you have decided based on the other earlier decision problems here in this example my decision was to buy a call so therefore when it comes to the decision as to the expiry date i will choose a longer dated option now what is longer dated should it be six months should it be nine months seven months eight months that is not exact okay obviously the further out you go the less theta that you'll have but then it's a, there's a point at which your extra premium versus the uh, saving of theta you have to balance that trade-off so here the answer is again as you notice it's not a very scientific answer it is only saying okay push yourself to longer dated options but how long that is something you have to use your judgment on okay this is clear everyone is clear about this how do you solve the decision problem as to the expiry date okay now there is another reason for this okay this is also written in your notes so maybe we can even look at the notes i'm coming to that first let's get clear the about the longer dated options okay another thing is the longer dated another reason for this decision okay the decision is clearly that if you are going to be buying options you make sure you buy longer dated options not very short dated options like not below 15 days or so 15 days below 15 days becomes really short dated okay 
so uh, but further out you go the better it is in general but then you have to see what is the incremental benefit okay the other reason is that longer dated options also have higher vega what is vega vega is the sensitivity to what yes Priya. what you have a big grin on your face i thought because you like options with high vega that's okay so another principle another reason for the decision okay what is the decision we took we said that uh, we want to buy let's stick with the picture we want to be buying longer dated options and we want to be selling shorter dated options okay so another reason for another reason for the same uh, you know decision rule this is a decision rule that we have okay a decision rule is when we are buying options we will buy longer dated options when we are selling options we will be selling shorter dated options okay another reason for the decision rule is that longer dated options also have higher vega okay remember what is higher vega vega is the sensitivity to what Vol. okay Vol. so vega is the sensitivity what the vega is measuring is the sensitivity of this vega is measuring the sensitivity of the option premium these two things two changes in the vol input okay the changes in the vol input changes changes in eyeball we'll call it changes in eyeball because these are going to be market prices okay so essentially that's what vega is measuring so then remember why are we saying when let's take one part of the decision okay the one part of the decision rule the buying options part we are saying that uh, you want to be buying longer dated options one because they have lesser theta and the second reason we are giving is because they have higher vega okay so remember what is why am i buying options what is my view on eyeball if i'm buying options bullish my view on eyeball is bullish remember this matrix okay maybe you should not even uh, remember the matrix you should remember it more intuitively but if you see that i'm buying options either buying calls or buying puts that means my eyeball view is bullish, bullish. okay so therefore either way here i want to be therefore if in a longer dated option what will happen is the because i'm buying options and buying longer dated option longer dated options have higher vega so therefore if my view turns out to be correct i will get more bang for my buck are you following because the uh, if my view turns out to be correct i was bullish on eyeball okay so like i look at this chart and i'm bullish on eyeball okay and actually my view turns out to be correct eyeball shoots up to 25 okay in that, that case if i had bought longer dated options because the sensitivity the vega is much higher for longer dated options so the options which i bought the price will change much more in response to the change in ball are you following the logic yes is everyone clear okay. sensitivity is more okay so therefore the price will move much more so i can get more bang for my buck okay so that's essentially the essentially it gives you a chance to benefit more from the eyeball view okay so therefore and then the reverse is true shorter dated options have lower vega okay so therefore what you want to be doing is as a general rule so this part is the second part is not so uh you know logical in terms of the selling decision the decision to sell shorter dated options is mainly driven by the higher theta of shorter dated options remember now if you're selling options you want the theta to be very high because you don't when you sell an option all you want is that there should be no movement really what you want is when you want uh, when you're selling options uh as far as the eyeball view is concerned there should not be any movement and eyeball should start to drop and then every day you will pick up the, all the theta belongs to you you sell something for 20 20 dollars the next day the price becomes 19 dollars the next day the price becomes 18 dollars and so every day the price keeps dropping by the amount of the theta so you want to be collecting the theta as a seller of options okay so it's clear so therefore you want to sell shorter dated options okay and they also have lower vega so in case there is any movement in the eyeball the damage is also less okay but mainly uh, this is driven by the theta aspect of it okay so is everyone clear about the expiry decision okay the expiry decision problem you need to choose the expiry okay as we show, showed you here so many expiries to choose from okay which one do you choose generally go longer dated if you're buying go shorter dated if you're selling yeah please explain it in the case of sell, selling ones okay so selling what we are saying is see if you are selling options okay if you look at this remember this we said the signs of the vega theta everything is for long option positions okay 
so if you are selling this will become positive the theta will be in your favor the theta is negative for long option positions if you buy a call or you buy a put every day the theta will work against you they have we've written this earlier in the note somewhere that long option positions have negative theta and short option positions have positive theta which means they benefit from the theta so short option position obviously will be the opposite in a long option position if you go long options and every day the theta works against you that means that in a short option position that should be the reverse the theta should work in your favor is this clear okay so therefore uh, the uh, the main driver of this decision to sell shorter dated options when you are selling options to be concentrated on the shorter dates okay the main driver of the decision is that shorter dated options have high theta okay they also have less vega than longer dated options okay so if you have any dramatic movement in eyeball the dramatic the corresponding change in the option price will also be uh, you know limited okay so if it goes against if the eyeball goes against you then the damage will be less okay but the more important reason to be selling shorter dated options is because they have high theta okay so the theta is high and a short option position you will be uh, 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 you will be benefiting from the theta it is positive theta is this clear everyone's clear okay so we solve one more decision problem so you can see that there is a structured approach to solving the decision it's not just something randomly you decide buy here sell there there is a structured uh, logic as to how you come to the decision is this clear so far okay any more decision problem left in option trading any more decision problem yes at the money what we are going to have to give up on this i might as well shut this thing down because it's obviously not able to function properly eyeball chart will be a, not necessarily not ne depends on how you are plotting the eyeball there are two types of so sahil is saying that the eyeball chart is should be a cross sectional data chart okay now my answer to that question is or that statement is not necessary depending on what you are charting okay but let's clear up this concept it's a good thing that he asked this question let's clear up this concept this chart of this is an eyeball chart the vix the vix is we also have an india vix you should be aware of this india vix is plotting the eyeball for uh, nse options okay uh, so this is a vix chart okay uh, this is for the s&p 500 index okay now this chart when you see this does this look like a cross sectional data chart or a time series chart time series time series chart okay so that's why my answer to sahil's question is not necessarily depends on what you are plotting so if you are plotting eyeball in this manner okay uh, for this is actually roughly for about 30 to 40 day options that they take okay tenor of options so in this case the eyeball you have to see what is being plotted here it's a time series data chart but if you look at your notes i have oh not in this note remember in the earlier note okay i had uh, a uh, chart let's say we can do we can just plot it here quickly okay if i do it this way okay so if i do one month two month three month six month okay so now one minute one minute be careful this is already there in your earlier module notes in the forms uh, functions notes okay suppose i plot this as six percent then twelve percent okay nineteen percent and say uh let's say 50 let's make it a little complicated uh, term structure okay now this is my uh, plot now what are these let's say this is the chart that is there in your tesla options okay this is the chart that is there in your notes in the earlier module okay so i looked at tesla options both calls and puts and i find that this is tesla options eyeball okay so this is tesla options eyeball okay if i look at um, if I look at one month options, I find that the eyeball for one month Tesla options is 6%. As for three months, it's 19%. Okay. Uh, 
All right. Okay. Is everyone clear about this? Are you following? Yes. What did I do? I looked at options on the common stock of Tesla, both calls and puts, and I computed a eyewall index. Okay, which we can actually look at. This is the chart ticker that is already there in your seeing. Let's do it here. Although Tesla is not one of your options, not one of your tickers. Let's figure out how you're going to get. Uh, let's look at this. Okay, this is also going to give you only one option. Um, so if I take Tesla and I do go, I will get a response. <coughs> okay, can you see? It's giving me a, 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 a response, okay, in terms of eyeball charts. And this is the, this is again the time series data chart. So it's not a good example. This is a time series data chart. But the point is I can actually get, uh, I can look at one month Tesla options. Because remember options, you have multiple expiries. Yeah. So I look at all one month Tesla options, I find the eyeball is 6%. Okay, which means that I need to enter 6% in the OBM to get uh, fair value equal to the market price. Okay, be clear about eyeball as well. So one month options is this, 12 months is two months is this, six months is whatever. Now if I plot this, what kind of chart will it be? Time series or cross-sectional? Cross -section. cross -section. cross -section. Not everybody is confident. Cross-sectional cross 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 data chart? Yes. Now it is a cross-sectional data chart because these are at a point of time and for different maturities. One particular variable at least being plotted, multiple maturities at the same point of time. Is, it, is this clear? So this is a term structure. So this we call, remember the general term, then our expression is term structure. Okay. And so we uh, we look at, uh, so, so we call this a term structure of eyeballs for Tesla options. Okay. All right. Now quickly to get you through the, uh, let me just put some other. Okay, so expiry, any other decision problem? Quickly, I need to make sure I finish this uh, in this session itself. Any other decision problem? What are these things? You've decided, let's say you've decided that your uh, expiry is going to be May 17th. I chose the May 17th expiration for buying options on whatever this is, SPY. Okay, I want to be buying calls on SPY and expiration is May 17th. So I've decided this also. Any other decision I have to take? Is there any other decision I have to take? Strike price. As Goel says, strike price. Obviously, because there's so many strikes, I can't be buying all the strikes. Nobody would buy all the strikes. I have to decide which strike. Okay. So this is where you get to the point where if you uh, remember the uh, the view that because I had to close the TWS. Okay, so you have an additional decision problem, which is strike. Okay, strike is the other decision problem. Okay, so strike is again decided based on eyeball and etc. I'm writing etc. because there are other considerations. But here's an important thing to learn. Okay, see normally notice that when you look at this here, you don't have the eyeball information. Okay, here you don't have the eyeball information. And here you find I'm just gonna make it I don't know why this is not the fonts are not becoming bigger. Okay, here you find this is uh, one what is the price 279. So here you find more activity. Okay. Now these are the premia. Okay. I think they put the prices on the first. Yeah, last price. How is it time? It's not time. No, no, for one minute. I, one minute. I'll just, I have to make sure I finish this logic. Okay. The last thing, one minute. Please notice. Okay. There is still time. Wait one sec. I'm going to finish this. Okay. Be, please pay attention, guys. Okay. 279. Here is the price. When you launch your option trader, when you launch your option trader, when you mouse over the bid and offer, you will see there are some percentage figures. Yes. You see there's some percentage figures being shown. Those are the eyeballs. Okay. That you don't get in a normal display. So here, when you look at this, okay, suppose 279 is the price. Okay. When you look at this, the calls, let's say, look at, we look at 279. Let's look at 280. Okay. The call is worth 576. Okay. This call is worth. I'm already deciding to buy calls. Okay. So this call is worth 576. This call at 284 call is worth 5, 375. Okay. And this is worth 576, the 280 call. 
the 284 call is worth 375 now this obviously if you look at the premium itself this is cheaper yes, sir. yes okay but the learning here is that you do not decide which option is cheaper and which is more expensive by looking at the absolute premium you decide that by looking at the eyeball okay when you look at the eyeballs in the TWS you will find that they don't all have the same strike okay there's something called a volatility smile sometimes you'll find that the at the money options have lower eyeball out of the money options have higher eyeball okay so what am I doing here my decision is to buy a call I'm a buyer of options so I want to buy cheap options or more expensive options cheap, cheap options. options okay how do I decide an option when an option is cheap not by looking at the absolute at premium the eyeball. but at this 375 is cheaper wow this is great 375 is cheaper than 576 I have to look at I have to mouse over this in TWS and I have to look at the eyeball the ones which have lower eyeball are cheaper options than the ones which have higher eyeball. This is the learning that you have here in this uh, incremental learning that whether or not an option is cheap or expensive, you decide that by looking at the eyeball, not at the absolute premium. Is this clear? Yes. So there are some other considerations also based on your view of the market. Okay. So, okay so is this learning clear now just one minute i'll just make sure that everybody's clear so that you can actually move on the strike is based on which strike to buy i will buy when i'm buying i will buy strikes with lower eyeballs when i'm selling i'll sell strikes with higher eyeballs but there are some other this is not so clear cut but this is one of the important considerations the main learning is option cheap or expensive not based on the premium but based on the eyeball is this clear yes sir. okay so now you have enough learning to go ahead and trade yes sir. okay everybody has to send me the trading t uh, actual project account name and account number you have said nobody else has said clear okay you can go now